Today we're going to work through uh, the issue of identifying and communicating about a gap in our research. Uh, our research project is going to fill in one tiny piece of the larger conversation or uh, add to the body of knowledge in with one detail. So for our gap, we need to be able to take a look at the work of other researchers, look at either the groups, the time periods, the regions, the practices that they've investigated, and then we need to identify somewhere in there uh, something that has not been addressed by those researchers so that we can contribute to this larger body of knowledge. Uh, before we can start to identify that though, we need to have done a thorough exploration of the research in the field. So if you have not completed a thorough annotated bibliography at this point, looking at either methods or questions to be asked, you need to stop, go back, revisit those annotated bibliographies, add to them so that you have a thorough understanding, and then come back and visit this video. So how do we go about identifying it? Well, what we need to do is make a choice. And as we've done this thorough investigation um, of the field, we've probably identified a lot of different options for gaps. But remember, we have a limited amount of time uh, and we also have a lot of other things going on in our life. So for our research project, we need to make a choice. We might have many choices and several of them might be good choices, but we need to make a good choice and a singular one so that we can focus in on it and write about it in such a way that we thoroughly communicate about the need for our gap to be addressed and defend those choices. So we need to identify one, not multiple gaps. So what is the gap? Uh, it's a choice to explore the topic in a manner that other researchers have not yet explored adequately. Um, it's possible that researchers have looked at it in a similar fashion, but now it's our job to perhaps uh, do a more thorough exploration of a particular issue that others may have just touched on lightly and so we want to be more thorough about our exploration or it could be just looking at a different group whether it be uh, gender, ethnicity, age groups, um, other social identifiable uh, designations that have not been thoroughly addressed by the existing body of knowledge. Now, something to keep in mind, there is no expectation that a high school student knows all of the research done on a topic. You simply need to communicate through your writing that your initial searches have been adequately thorough enough to justify your choice of a gap. This is where we need to bring in a wide range of sources surrounding the subject. Uh, that is the section of our paper that will be the introduction and the literature review where we're communicating about the previous research that has happened before we have jumped into the subject. Uh, but clearly, uh, there's zero chance that a high school student could have looked at all of the research in a particular field. So the AP readers will be looking to see is there adequate evidence that you have done thorough research. Now I get the question often about what is the proper number of sources and I don't know how to tell you that because some subjects there's a great deal of research on them, others there's not as much. Um, I can say that in looking at successful papers that have been posted to the College Board website in terms of high scoring examples from previous years at the AP reading, uh, that at, at a minimum there should be 17 to 18 sources that are being communicated about. Um, it gets way, way, way too complex to talk about anything more than 30 to 35 sources. That would be at the extreme high end, but somewhere in there, somewhere maybe in the neighborhood of 18 to 24 might be a sweet spot where the reader can say, okay, there has been an adequate level of research done here to communicate about a potential gap. Um, but less than that, there's going to raise some questions about whether or not there has been adequate research. Um, now, how do I find a gap as a student researcher? How can I identify what has not been dealt with by other researchers? 
I highly suggest checking the following sections of academic papers. Look at the methods section. Uh, many times in the methods section, the researchers will communicate about the participants or the variables to be observed. They'll give some very clear details. Uh, maybe they'll identify the age range, the ethnicity, uh, the location in which people live, the socioeconomic class of their participants. So taking that into consideration, just look at the methods section and oftentimes you might be able to find an identifiable gap because your research is going to address something they did not. Maybe they looked at one age group and you're interested in looking at a different age group. So look at the methods section of all of your sources and see if there's a pattern and we'll come back to that in just a moment. Another excellent place to look is that in most credible academic research, there is a section that is oftentimes labeled future directions or next steps. That's where these researchers are communicating about how their work has contributed to the body of knowledge, but then making suggestions for who the next researcher might want to look at or how they might want to contribute. They might make suggestions, say, maybe in a future study, people should look at blank well, you might be that next researcher. So looking at the future directions or next step sections of papers might actually make it very simple for you to identify what your potential gap might be. Uh, keeping that in mind, let's look at some samples that we might want to look at. So first, example one, let's talk about age groups, okay? So what's our topic? the emotional impact of coronavirus lockdowns. Perhaps we're interested in looking at that examination. Uh, and I look at a few sources. Sources A, B, and G are looking at age group 18 to 24. All of their participants fit into that. And they're focusing just on age. Uh, perhaps sources H, F, and E are looking at age group 35 to 55. Uh, I have another age group, ages 24 to 35, with another set of sources, and then another group that's looking at ages 55 to 75. So I have 18 to 24, 35 to 55, 24 to 35, and 55 to 75. What's an obvious gap here? Age group 14 to 18. So I've looked at a range of sources that have communicated about other age groups and my obvious gap is to say they have not looked at the age group 14 to 18. So that might be uh, one option if you're looking at age groups that might be a very obvious gap. Let's move on to example number two and in here we're looking at the topic of which genre of Netflix original show is the most popular. So our focus here of the research would be about genres. Uh, perhaps there's not enough adequate research on Netflix, but genres could also relate to any research done uh, in the arts or looking at film or TV shows, traditional cable television shows. So this is a topic that's very popular among students, so it might be about genre. So let's look as it relates to Netflix. Perhaps several of my sources have looked at teen dramas. Maybe others have looked at the genre of horror. Uh, my third set of sources is looking at historical dramas and then my fourth set is looking at adult animation. So previous researchers have looked at popularity as it relates to teen dramas, horror, historical dramas, and adult animation. An obvious gap might be documentaries. Nobody in this set of researchers has looked at documentaries. Perhaps that could be a gap I could address. There are clearly many other genres that are available on Netflix, but perhaps my research needs to be just on documentaries. Remember, we need to make a singular choice. We don't need to identify every gap that hasn't been addressed. We need to address a singular gap for our research. Let's move on to example number three. Uh, many of you end up doing work related to 
um, health outcomes or treatments for particular maladies. So here we're looking at our topic is which treatment might be best for migraine headaches. My initial set of sources is looking at hydration. Perhaps if I'm uh, adequately, adequately hydrated, perhaps that might address the concern. Uh, perhaps there's another set of sources have looked at the efficacy of daily injection therapy. Maybe there's some medications out there suggesting that a daily injection therapy could be useful. Uh, others might be suggesting diet as a possible treatment for migraine headaches and others might just look at a daily aspirin regimen. So I'm looking at a range of options from hydration and daily injection therapy to diet and aspirin regimen. Now there are many other options uh, in terms of treatments for migraine headaches but perhaps one gap might be homeopathy. That's just something that has not yet been addressed by the sources that I pulled together. Now, is it possible that out there in the world there's plenty of research as it relates to homeopathy? That is entirely possible, but as a student researcher, I'm communicating about the sources I brought together and how they have not addressed homeopathy. I'm not trying to communicate that I looked at every paper around the subject of migraine headaches ever, I'm trying to justify that I'm making the choice of homeopathy because based on my thorough investigation, that's an identifiable gap. Let's take a look at another example, and this one is something that relates to a lot of student research projects, is the idea of locations. So for this particular topic, we're looking at which region has been most successful in reducing COVID transmission. Many of my resources might be related to Europe. Others might be looking at Asia. Some might be looking at South America and another set might look at North America. So as we're looking at this range of sources, it becomes very obvious that these are all very continental, very large scope. So there's a obvious gap to be addressed here. Any singular nation uh, for Europe, maybe it's Italy. For North America, maybe it's the United States or Canada. For Asia, perhaps we're looking simply at Malaysia. Maybe in South America, we're looking just at Argentina. Any type of gap about a very singular nation. Now, a lot of student projects uh, on this issue it might be that you just haven't found adequate research about the region in which you live, whether it's a singular state or a singular city or even a singular school district. So locations can be a very simple and effective way to identify a gap. Perhaps this research has been done with many other groups in many other locations that might be similar. Uh, for those of us here in Southern California, uh, perhaps a lot of our research has been done in large urban areas along the east coast of the United States, but we haven't found adequate research about the city of Long Beach, California. Perhaps our gap might just be focusing our work as it relates to the city of Long Beach. Um, as we move forward and try to identify our gap, we need to ask ourselves a series of questions. One, have you read enough sources to justify a gap? If you've only looked at five or six sources, you're not going to be able to adequately identify that there's a gap related to your study. Second question, will you be able to defend your choice of a gap by connecting your work to the existing body of knowledge? You need to not only say, here is my gap, but you also need to defend it by linking it to the work of other people. So when we're discussing our gap, we need to be able to, in a written form, connect our choice to the work of other people. I will be choosing to focus on the location of Long Beach, California, because sources A, C, and D focused on uh, the east coast of the United States, but there's not adequate research about uh, Long Beach, California. I also chose on Long Beach, California because sources F, J, and K looked at the entire state of California, but there are some unique elements to Long Beach, California that have not been addressed. So I need to defend my choice by saying, here is my choice, and here's how other researchers have not addressed that particular choice. Um, and then you will need to ask yourself, will you be able to communicate about how your gap will contribute 
to the existing body of knowledge? Can you communicate about the value of your work? How will it help us understand your subject matter better uh, if we have good, credible data surrounding your gap? Once again, if you want to know how to do that, let's take a look uh, towards the end of academic papers and look at their analysis and look at how these other researchers have